A good oil to fuel mix for a two stroke engine is vital for its longevity. But if you want to know a few little tricks that I've always used to keep my two stroke engines free from wear and tear in relation to the oil and fuel mix, then keep watching this video because in the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you just that. Hello, welcome to the Repair Specialist channel. As the vast majority of two-stroke owners know, the two-stroke fuel has to have the oil within it. And that's either mixed in with the fuel before it's put into the fuel tank, or in some cases, the oil is placed into a separate tank and then is injected into the fuel as it's being used. But to my knowledge, the latter isn't quite so common with small garden machinery. And so those that do own these type of machines probably won't have this system. So in this video, I'm going to concentrate on the fuel to oil mix. But there are a couple of little tricks that I've always used in relation to oil and fuel mix that have kept my machines from wear and tear for many, many years over the years. And this information was passed down to me from my mentors, but it's nothing magic or mystical. It's just common sense information that they'd found out over the years that worked and they passed it on to me. And it might well be that this is actually nothing new to you. It's basically some common sense principles. So if I show you them now, then you can decide whether they're right for you. So let's begin. And so of course, if the ratio of oil to fuel is wrong for a particular two stroke engine, then it's likely that it will produce some sort of damage. And so it really is vital that we get this constitution right. We need to use a really good quality premium oil. I like to use it out of bottles like this. I find it saves time. There's a little gauge at the top there, like a little tank, and it helps us mix this oil with the fuel to the right constitution. If you do want to find a good premium oil with this kind of bottle, then I've included a link below in the description. And so now let's take a look at why the fuel to oil constitution has to be correct. Let's take a look at the actual engine inside the chainsaw itself. Itself. And so here we have our engine and fuel tank isolated there. And so we know then that when this engine starts to work and the piston starts to travel up and down the cylinder, there's obviously two metal surfaces there rubbing against each other. And so of course we need some lubrication to stop any seizing of those components together. And as we know, that lubrication comes in the form of the two stroke oil in the fuel. So as the engine begins to run and fuel is drawn through the carburetor and into the engine there and used, obviously it then lubricates the engine. So observing the two stroke run like this then with the piston lowering and then raising we can see that there is always some fuel touching some of the components of that engine even though the fuel is used for combustion it's always touching those components as it's traveling through the engine and with a sufficient amount of good quality oil and fuel like this everything should keep running well okay so now we can see what happens in there let's imagine we've got a sufficient amount of fuel coming into the engine but we didn't mix it to the right constitution there's too little oil in with the fuel as that piston moves up and down in the cylinder that will ultimately result in what we call scoring of the piston and the barrel. If we take a look here at an actual piston, we can see we've got a normal one here, this side, and then on this side here, we've got a scored piston. We can clearly see those very damaging score lines there from top to bottom of the piston. We can see clearly that the piston rings have also been damaged. They've been worn away there. So there's no way that this piston would be able to create any compression in order to run a machine. And if it did run, there's no way that it would run very well whatsoever. This is severely damaged. Damaged. And this kind of damage doesn't just occur on the piston and the barrel as a result of low oil. It also occurs anywhere where there's metal working on metal. So we've got the big end bearings here and of course we've got the main bearings as well. Let's now have a look at how we can prolong the life of the engine so we can have the chainsaw working well for many more years. Handling the chainsaw well and regular services basically respecting it are all part and parcel of keeping a chainsaw for many many years working well. Basically with my own experience in the trade I found that if a chainsaw requires a a 50 to 1 mix then I always make it slightly stronger so I'll go as much as 45 to 1 even 40 to 1. Of course some brands of chainsaw do recommend this strength of oil to fuel mix but it's a case of looking at the type of chainsaw what's recommended for it and do it slightly stronger for that particular chainsaw and doing so is going to see much less of this kind of problem with engines and particularly general wear. Of course an issue for some people is that because there's more oil inside the fuel then there's more oil being burnt there may well be a little more exhaust smoke 
smoke experienced and also more carbon building up on the spark plugs. But to me, that's a very good exchange, weighing up the cost of a few more spark plugs per year compared to the rebuild or the replacement of an engine. And I've found over the years that just increasing the concentrations by this small amount doesn't actually carbon the whole engine up, so the big problem's there. It normally just does the spark plug and there's a little more smoke. And of course, as I've said, there's nothing magical or mystical about this. It's just some principles I've always used, which I hope will work well for you if you decide to use them. I do realize though that most oil nowadays, especially synthetic oils, are really good and do provide adequate protection at the ratios advised. But just tweaking the ratio that little bit more, as I've mentioned, I've found that it will just offer that little bit more protection, especially if we're using a machine day after day for long periods of time, especially if it's in warm weather, etc. And please take a look down in the description below where you'll find a link to my website for some free downloads. I've designed these to help with diagnostics, troubleshooting and repairs of certain two-stroke engines, mainly chainsaws. And I shall be continually adding new downloads here, so please keep your eye on this side of the site so you can always be up to date with what's new on there and to continually see if there's any downloads of particular value to you. The best of it is that they're printable so you can take them in the workshop with you and study them at your own time whilst you're working on your machine. There are some paid downloads, but most of them are and will remain free. And in the meantime, I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.